robot drones, the dystopic future of America. Just days after a 44-foot unmanned surveillance drone crashed on the shores of Maryland, Senator Rand Paul is proposing legislation that would curb the use for, of drones for domestic use. It's called the Preserving Freedom from Unwarranted Surveillance Act of 2012. Great. Well, at least someone's trying to stop the surveillance state from expanding into the sky. But wait, does this bill really do anything to halt their use? To explore the issue and more, I'm joined by Marcy Wheeler, author and blogger for EmptyWheel.net. Hey, Marcy, thanks for joining me. I wanted to play a clip really quickly of what Rand had to say about this legislation. And a drone is a very, very powerful way of snooping on behavior. And I don't want them monitoring every, every bit of my behavior. And I'm not joking about the recyclables. I mean, we've had different states and cities trying to punish people criminally for not separating out the recyclables. We don't want a nanny state that watches every minute of our day. It's not that there'll be no drones. It's that drones will only be used when a judge says that it's proper. So not only uh, when a judge says that it's proper to use Marcy, but he also put up some pretty uh, interesting exceptions for drone use. If we could show that really quickly on the screen. Um, he says the exceptions are patrolling the borders when law enforcement deems them necessary or a high terror alert or no evidence obtained could be used as evidence in a criminal civil action. Uh, what do you think about this, this legislation as a whole, Marcy? I think it's a good start. Uh, there's a couple of things he's built in which are really important on surveillance legislation, uh, such as the one is you can't use the evidence in a criminal trial. The other one is there are penalties. So if they violate this law, then you can go back and sue them. Um, the problem is that these drones are already everywhere else. And the Air Force, uh, not long ago, I mean, I, I want, it, is a, it is a very good start. It's a well-crafted bill, I think. It stands a small chance of attracting some attention. But uh, the Air Force, uh, a couple weeks back, already announced that they are going to, that they can keep surveillance of you that they collected incidentally. And we know from some of the other surveillance that's going on in the country already, particularly telecom um, surveillance up d done under the Patriot Act, that they can keep this and go back and search it and then use it in whatever intelligence way they want to. The, what, what this bill would prohibit, um, which is a real example, is last year there was one example where a, where a border military drone was used to go surveil a a ranch, basically, and capture six sovereign citizens or, or a couple of sovereign citizens who had cattle rustled, six cows, six cattle. Um, and that what the way they used the drone was to go fly over this ranch and wait until the people on the ranch were not armed so that the police could go in there and arrest them. And that's currently being litigated right now. And out of that, we're going to get some basis of whether drones count as just normal overhead surveillance or whether it counts as enhanced overhead surveillance. Uh, but, you know, there's still a great amount of surveillance that Paul's bill would permit, particularly given that most of the drones operating in the airspace right now are military and the Air Force has already said they're not going to throw out what they pick up incidentally. What about the, you know, the exception of just kind of that blanket threat of terrorism, if there's a terror threat? I mean, we already know the abuse kind of coming from the State Department with the chart and, and just all these, these threats. There's a terrorist threat here one day and, and not the next. I mean, could that be misused or abused and just say like, oh, well, you know, we needed to, to use these drones to surveil because there was a threat? Oh, absolutely. Um, but I think the, the bill, I mean, yes, it absolutely could. And, you know, one of the immediate questions is how they're going to define terrorism in that circumstance. But it does, in that sense, model other existing legislation, such as telecom wiretapping, um, but it is crafted somewhat better than what telecom legislation is in place right now. So in other words, um, there's sort of this assumption in the United States that you're allowed to use surveillance for intelligence, but not for, not for crime, for, for criminal uh, surveillance, right? And there's that separation in, in telecom surveillance right now and wiretapping. And I think what Paul is trying to do is replicate that because we are so far down the pike on surveillance at this point that to suggest that you would have to have to get a warrant for for terrorism surveillance um, 
unfortunately, people would just go crazy and say there's no way. Same thing with the border exception. Drones kind of, and, and new surveillance almost always gets rolled in at the border because there's what's called this border exception, which the Supreme Court has broadly accepted uh, over a number of cases already. Marcy, I wanted to show you a map really quickly of just how many drone bases there are in the U.S. currently, um, already 20 state and local governments and 24 universities are already authorized to fly them. Uh, so it just seems like, you know, are drones just an inevitability of the ever-expanding surveillance state at this point? I mean, is there really nothing we can do to stop these from, uh, from I mean, they're saying that, yeah, you, you know, we're not going to spy on the average person in their backyard, but I mean, how do we really know what's going to happen with these drones? I think it's. I think we're at a really important moment, and and Paul's bill is a part of that because it's going to raise this conversation. There are people on both the left and the right who are opposed to drone in the domestic sphere, for a variety of reasons. One is safety. That drone went down the other day, and we're just lucky it didn't go down in in a more populated area. Um, the FAA is having a difficult time working out how we're going to get drones flying safely in civilian airspace. Another problem is people keep buying these drones and find they're finding them a lot more expensive than, than they thought they were going to be. The, the um, Customs and Border Patrol just got, uh, got criticized by the Inspector General at DHS last month because they're not, they A, can't use their drones as much as Congress told them to use their drones. There aren't the purposes, there isn't the maintenance, there aren't the staff. And B, they're a lot more expensive than the lobbyists are trying to sell them or making them out. And the other thing people need to realize is there's this trade-off going on is, you know, we're, we're getting our local police forces cut because we can't afford them. And yet the Department of Homeland Security is giving these grants to localities so they can buy these drones as if that could replace those policemen patrolling the streets. That's not going to make us safer. So um, there's all of these reasons why drones aren't what, the, the lobbyists are pressing them to be. And, and, and as you said, I mean, we're, we're not being able to afford lo police, yet these drones are hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, we're out of time, but thank you so much for joining us, Marcy. That was Marcy Wheeler, author and blogger for EmptyWheel.net.